Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a fun video. I know I say that in the beginning of all my videos, but it's truly because I feel like every video where I play with makeup is fun. <laughs> But today we're gonna to be doing a super fun video that I have been waiting to film because I'm so excited. It is a makeup tutorial that is a homage to 2016 makeup. This was personally for me like a golden year for makeup. Loved the way my makeup came out. I loved the things that I was playing with and a lot of the stuff is still around. So we're gonna be using it today, doing a nice fun throwback makeup tutorial. So if that is something you are interested in seeing, Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and prime my eyes first with the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. This was something that was used in 2016 quite frequently. I remember I would watch all these makeup tutorial videos and they started with the MAC Painterly Paint Pot or they used the, the paint pot in, I think it was Ochre? Orchid? I don't remember. It was like another one, but it was more yellowy than this one was. I'm just gonna take a like dense fluffy brush. This is a Real Techniques deluxe crease brush because I don't want to use my fingers because my nails are kind of long now and I just feel like gross dipping it into the <laughs> actual product. So I'm just gonna paint that all over the lid. I know that in 2016 people were starting to come out with more and more eyeshadow primers because for the longest time there was just the Urban Decay like what was it the, the one that came in a little potion bottle and so more and more companies started to come out with eyeshadow primers because no one i feel like no one had really heard of that before and it was a new thing because more and more eyeshadow palettes were coming out like i feel like this was a time where more and more makeup was being pumped out like good makeup people were also using concealer but i always preferred an actual eyeshadow primer because concealer didn't hold on to the eyeshadow the palette we're going to use today i have shown you guys in another video in my haul video that i'll have like linked if you want to check that out it is the modern renaissance palette i love this palette this was it for me in 2016 when i was in college i used this every single weekend so so good and this like i feel like this one in particular because there was this one and then there was the soft glam one that came out that like rocked the world but i feel like this one kind of set it off this palette okay might want this brush come out everyone loved this palette and there wasn't anything out there at the time that looked like this like this was a very specific color story whereas a lot of eye palettes that were out there were either very colorful people were just getting into like bright colors there was that bh was it bh the take me back to brazil i think is what it was called that people were using and then there was a lot of neutral palettes a lot of neutral palettes because that was what people were comfortable with that's what people were using so that's what makeup companies were putting out so i feel like this one kind of like took charge a little bit and was like well we're gonna do something a little bit different we're gonna do some pinks some neutrals some shimmers i'm gonna take raw sienna i feel like that's a good starting point it's a very neutral nude shade. I don't know any other word. It's like a neutral soft brown shade. I'm going to use my Sigma E25. Back in 2016, I only had a few brushes. Like I think I only had this brush, this brush, and like my Real Techniques brushes. I think these were like my core brushes that I used. And then I had this one from my NYX palette. And like this is what I had in college. And these, I could take over the world with these brushes. <laughs> I still have them today and they still pretty much look exactly the same. Same. They're so good, especially Sigma brushes. Like I do use a lot of Morphe, but Sigma, if you are willing to invest the money in really good brushes, Sigma, I mean, at least they used to. I haven't picked up anything new in Sigma, so maybe quality has changed, but I don't think I've heard that. Sigma brushes are very good quality and they last for a really long time. Like I've cleaned this countless times and the shape hasn't changed at all. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead with Raw Sienna on this. I forgot how much kickback was in this palette. <laughs> and I'm gonna take this right out here in the crease. I've seen so many people talk about the new Anastasia palette and how great it is. I'm curious to try it out, but I just know that this one, this one and that Soft Glam palette were so, there was nothing out there like those palettes. I mean, even now I feel like people those are their staple palettes still so i'm just blending this pulling it out and like up just to give the template for how i'm gonna like put the rest of my eyeshadows lifting it out and like pulling it out like this really helps to lift my eyes because i have pretty downturned eyes 2016 for me was a great year for makeup it was a great year for makeup for music for youtube it was a great year for those things in my life and i feel like on youtube it was a great time to be on youtube as someone who did makeup because it was it was just taking off or not even just taking off it was just getting like at its peak just getting to where everyone wanted 
wanted to watch it and everyone like that was their source of entertainment. I feel like now people do like reality TV with their YouTube channel now. Like it's so much more than what it used to be, which is awesome. And in 2016, it was just, it was a, not so much a simpler time, but it was just the makeup tutorials were, you knew what you were gonna get and they were so much fun to just sit there and watch. It was such a good time. I'm pulling this in, not all the way in, but like pretty much to where my brow ends. I like to keep the inner corner light. It really helps to lift and elongate my eyes. I have like a whole video on how I do that whole technique and I'll have it linked up here if you wanna check that out. I think we're gonna go in with our next shade now. I think I'm gonna use red ochre. Using my favorite brush, this Morphe M506. Take this red ochre shade right here. I'm gonna take this in the outer corner, but just in a diagonal kind of way, going on the lash line and then working my way up. I'm gonna bring it in pretty far. I loved doing my makeup in college and I loved using this palette, I remember. I almost loved the getting ready. Not almost, I definitely did, well, I don't know because I did have a lot of fun. I almost loved getting ready more than I loved to go out. And it was all good, you know, it was really good makeup. Not that makeup now is crappy quality, but it was it was such a different time for makeup. It was, it was like a golden era. Going almost halfway in. Not in the inner corner though. Like I'm not bringing it into that inner corner because like I said, I want to keep it light and I'm trying to go like this with the shadow. Then on my Profusion ES6, I want to take this love letter shade, but I feel like it's not gonna be as much of a difference. So I'm gonna take Cypress Umber instead, which is a chocolatey, chocolatey brown. And I'm gonna focus this, you guessed it, in my outer corner, <laughs> but just right like here I'm gonna start and then work my way out in the same kind of diagonal formation. In 2016, I used to really love a nice shimmery bright inner corner. So we're going to replicate that today. I used to always take this Vermeer color, the Vermeer or Primavera color. These two are ones that I would always take. And today we're going to do the Primavera one because it's a bit more like pinky. I'm going to take that on this Morphe M421 brush, which is my favorite brush to use for like packing shadows on. Starting from the inner corner, I'm first gonna go up. Again, we want to keep that diagonal shape. The shade, oh god, this shade had me in a chokehold. Taking some red ochre just to mesh into Vermeer. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do my other eye and then do my liner and mascara, but I'm gonna put falsies on so it won't even matter. <laughs> but let me go do my other eye and then my liner and then I'll come back and we can keep doing some more makeup with some 2016 favorites. So I'll see you in just a second. All right, we are back in action. We're gonna go on with face now. I'm gonna use a primer that I didn't use in 2016 but that I am still testing out. It is the Laura Mercier Pure Canvas primer. It's a blurring, a silicone free primer. And I'm still trying to see if I like it because I can't tell. I'm going to focus it right here in my T-zone. I think in 2016, I would use the Angel Veil by NYX. It was like a dupe for the, what was it? Hourglass? That Hourglass primer that everyone liked. Jeez, what other face primers were there at the time in 2016? I feel like there's so many more now. Granted, there's so many more, like there's so much more of everything now in makeup, but I feel like there were not that many face primers. I don't love the way that that primer makes my hands feel. The foundation that I'm gonna take that was it in 2016 for me is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. I just did a video on this, like comparing how it was versus how it is now. I'll have it linked. This is what I'm gonna take today on my face because it's what I used every weekend. I'm gonna go with my sponge. This is the way that I like would apply my foundation. Now I have different techniques for when I want different things accomplished on my face, but this is the way that I did it. It was like foundation, concealer, powder. That was the way that everyone was doing it. It was the way that I was doing it. I didn't get underneath my eyes just because we are gonna go in with a concealer now. I'm gonna be taking what I used in 2016 and what everyone was using. I feel like people still use this, like this is still their favorite concealer. This is the Tarte Shape Tape. Yes, it is still around and yes, it is still just as good as it used to be. This is in the shade 22N Light Neutral. I love this concealer and I would go pretty hard with it. Like I would use a lot, even though I didn't have to. <laughs> it did dry out my under eyes. I recently tried the Tarte Shape Tape Creamy Concealer and it was god awful. This was another product in 2016. I think that's when it came out, but it was another product back then, six, seven years ago that really shocked the earth and kind of took over the makeup game. This was so like such a 
a full coverage concealer. No one was doing it like this concealer back in the day. I mean, now we have all these concealers that are half the weight of this one and cover just as much. It's crazy how far we've come, but it is crazy to see that these products are still just as good. I'm gonna go down the center of the face with this. Do you guys ever watch like old YouTube videos when you're feeling like you wanna be nostalgic? <laughs> I mean, I always watch like old Casey Holmes videos just because those are like my happy place and like that's where I feel safe. I was just recently watching a Pixie Woo. Do you guys remember Pixie Woo? I was watching a Pixie Woo video from 10 years ago and I remembered it like i remembered the exact video that i was watching and like the editing is so different now than from like what it was back then which is so obvious like it's such that's an obvious statement you know technology changes and stuff but it's just so crazy to see how far we've come people are really doing entire production set work like they're doing like lighting, mics, camera work, editing, and it's just one person that's doing it. It's so crazy, the talent that some of these people have. And it's crazy to see what it used to be like, what, what we used to like go crazy over. I'm gonna go in with the one size setting powder. I don't remember what I used to use back in the day, to be honest with you. I know that I had an Anastasia contour palette that I don't have anymore. I think I would use the yellow in that. I don't think that I used like an actual like loose setting powder. I didn't have the Laura Mercier one because that one was really popular back in the day. It still is, but I feel like there's so many more now, like this one size one, that are so good. I didn't use any cream products back in the day. I don't really know if cream products were that big in 2016. I feel like just recently they became a very big trend. Putting this wherever I did my Tarte Shape Tape, which is just under the eyes and down the center of the face. Like the smell of the makeup is bringing me back. <laughs> We're gonna go in with some powders now. I'm gonna take the Hoola Benefit Bronzer. This is what everyone was using in 2016. It was either like this one or like the MAC Gimme Sun was a very popular bronzer back in the day, but I feel like this one suited everyone except if you had some deeper skin, right? I feel like the shade range was not as good back in the day as it is now. It's still not where it should be, but it was not anywhere near what it is now. Even this bronzer has a bunch of different shades to it nowadays. I'm gonna use this Real Techniques blush brush. There was a Hoola Benefit brush that used to look like this. I'm going to just put this where I used to put my bronzer. That was the other thing. I wasn't like super particular in 2016 about where I put my makeup. Placement plays a big role now in my makeup routine, whereas like back in the day, it totally did not matter that much. <laughs> kind of just did what I did and I didn't try anything new. That's one thing that 2016 didn't have that 2022 now does is like people are doing things different ways. People are trying new techniques. People are using things for one thing. They weren't like marketed to be used as. People are doing so many new things now and like revolutionary things. Everything was pretty much the same. Like you could watch a makeup tutorial in 2016 and the same person would do the same steps in a different makeup tutorial. And like a different person would do the same exact steps in a different makeup tutorial like it was all very cookie cutter but like that's I loved it you know I loved that time I love now too because there's so much more but I love that time I think because that's when I really got into makeup and stuff like that and all I wanted to do was be one of them <laughs> like I wanted to be one of them so bad and now I am okay this looks really good what I liked about this bronzer like back then and even now is that it's kind of it was hard to go overboard she says as she goes overboard. And I never looked orange when I used it. You know how sometimes you can like look pretty orange with the right bronzer? <laughs> but it always worked out for me, you know? And I liked to use that to do, like I remember I first got it to do contouring with because the strong contour was just coming out during that phase of makeup. That's what I mostly used it for. I would bronze with it and then I'd go in with this, this one right here and then I would contour with it, and then I actually got the Anastasia contour palette, and then it was like game over. I don't have that contour palette with me today, but I do have this e.l.f. one that we're gonna use. This was pretty popular back then too. They had like a blush one of these, a cream one of these. I'm gonna take the darker shade in here, which is just like this one right here on this brush very lightly, and we're just gonna do a smidge of contouring. 
being very, very light-handed with this because it can get real muddy real fast with this. Then I'm gonna go in with this blush. This is the Milani Luminoso Baked Blush. This was such a good blush. Blush was like another product that not a lot of companies had. Like there was not a vast array of blushes to be had like there are now. There's cream blushes, stick blushes, powder blushes, baked blushes, blush toppers. Back then it was like MAC Warm Soul. This Milani Luminoso and like CoverGirl, like True Blend tinted powders. And this one, everyone loved. Well, I shouldn't say everyone. Again, if you had deeper skin tone, I don't know how this would perform. I'm guessing since it's very light, I don't know if it would show up. There is a bit of shimmer to it, so maybe, maybe it would. Lighter skinned, like girls and guys, this was the blush to be used. I'm gonna go in with a angled little small brush, fluffy brush. That's what I've been using recently for, oh my God. I forgot how powdery this was. I just got blush all over me. This is a baked blush. I mean, I don't really know what that means to be honest with you, but it's baked blush. So I think that means that it's a different texture or like, I don't even really know what. This does have shimmer in it. So you can tell that just by looking at it. I don't really mind because it's not like glitter, which is gonna cause my texture to look 10 times worse. So I'm gonna go off camera and I'm gonna do my lashes. Actually, before I do that, let's do the lower lash line. And we're gonna go in with red ochre. I'm gonna take a pencil brush because that's what I used. This is a Morphe M431. I used to go all the way in and like connect it out here. I now find that it's in my best interest to only take this in the like outer half. Whereas back in the day, I used to take this all along my lower lash line. Then I'm gonna go in with the raw sienna shade, which is the first First one that we used on the same brush. I would take the same fluffy brush and really blend out down here. So now that that is done, I'm gonna go hop off camera, do my brows, do my lashes, and then I'm gonna come back and we can finish this up with a 2016 lip. So I'll see you guys in just a second. All right, you guys, it is time for lips. I'm gonna go in with what I used to use all the time. The first thing that I would take is this MAC Strip Down Lip Liner. This was my favorite lip liner, like my only lip liner back in the day. And then on top of that, I would take this Maybelline Daringly Nude Lipstick. This was the duo that I was always using. And that's like what I would go out with, but because of who I am now, I am gonna go in with this Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in Endless Cacao, just on the Cupid's bow right here, and then underneath the bottom lip like in the center. I would actually take a little bit of this Primavera right here, very minimally. Put this on the tops of my cheekbones. For me, it offered like a very iridescent highlighter. And for my final step, I'm gonna go with my one size gel liner pencil in the shade Point Made, which is just a brown to bring back my little birthmark right here. And this is the final look, you guys. I love the way it came out. I feel like I'm ready to go out to a college bar with this makeup look on. I like doing these kinds of videos because it really reminds you of things that you used to love but might not use anymore. These products have been around for a while and they're still so relevant and so good. Videos like this that really remind me like what is a really ride or die product. So if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure that you go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you are not already, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and that you hit the little bell so you are always notified when I upload a new video. Let me know what your favorite product from 2016 was, if you were wearing makeup in 2016, if you were watching makeup tutorials in 2016. Just from back in the day, you know, from your golden era of makeup, let me know what your favorite product was. I would love to know. And I think that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope you all enjoyed. I had so much fun and I will see you all in my next one.